John chapter 1 today. We're going to be looking at John chapter 1 today, starting in verse 1 all the way to 10. I got a question. How many of you brought a physical Bible in the building today? Come on, if you brought a physical Bible, can you just wave it around like you just do care in the building? I love when people bring physical Bibles. How many of you brought a physical notebook? Come on. Note takers. Note takers are world changers. Okay, how many of you brought six different color highlighters? Okay, how many of you brought six different color highlighters? Somebody just spilled all of them all over the floor. So if you need a highlighter, I'm sure that they have one for you. John chapter 1, starting in verse 1 to 10, it says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Verse 3, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. Everybody say life. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Let me read that last line again. The world did not recognize him. Tonight I want to preach to you from this idea, nightlights, nightlights. Come on, would you pray with me today? Jesus, we love you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to spend in your presence, in your house, in this moment, in this hour, God. God, I pray that you would radically change our minds tonight, our hearts tonight, our spirits tonight. I don't know what everybody came in with, but I'm declaring by the power of the Holy Ghost, we're going to leave this room changed, transformed, never the same again, looking a little bit more like you. In Jesus' mighty name, and all God's people said, come on, all God's people said, Amen. Come on, one more time. Let's clap for Jesus in the building today. Hey, you remember sleeping with the nightlight before? Anybody? Come on, raise your hand if you ever slept with the nightlight. Okay, now put your hands down. Raise your hand if you still sleep with the nightlight. Come on, raise it high and proud today. Listen, I don't sleep with nightlights, but I got two daughters, and my daughters, they have grown accustomed to sleeping with this thing called a night light. Nightlight. A light that produces safety, a light that brings security, a light that enables them to see in the middle of the night when they need to wake up for a drink of water or to walk down the hall to their parents' room, they have these night lights. Many people, we use night lights because like my daughters, they always say, man, I am scared of the dark. Now, growing up, I didn't use a night light, but you best believe I was scared of the dark, okay? I didn't like the dark. I hated when my mama at 11 o'clock at night would say, hey, you need to take out the trash. I was like, I ain't taking out the trash. Do you know what's outside right now? Okay, the freaks come out at night, right? Like, I don't know what's out there. So there's some raccoon going to eat me alive. I ain't going outside. As a matter of fact, I, I used to live in the basement of my home, and I had what is called a frugal father. Anybody ever had a frugal father before? Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Like they pinch in pennies every which way that they can. They pinch in, pinch in unnecessary pennies. My daddy, he was like, hey, you are not allowed to leave any lights on in this house if you are not in that room. The problem is that my room was in the basement. An even bigger problem that I faced is that the light switch was about 20 feet away from the staircase. Okay, you ever been there before? Now, my staircase was not made like anybody's staircase. My staircase had gaps between each stair, okay, each step. Anybody ever seen those staircases before? The type that you can look through, and there's just two little beady eyes just looking back at you, right? There's like little demons behind that staircase, okay? Now, I would always freak out because... This is why I think I, I was good at track and field and why I went to college to run track and field is because I learned how to shut that light off and run, sprint, high knees up those stairs as fast as I could. So I was scared of the dark. I was so scared of the dark. I had this theme song that I would sing when I was in 
the dark. You know, my dad, he, he, was, a, he was a pastor, and he had a church. He had, he had a big building for a church. You know, like, the scariest place to be at, like, 1 a.m. in the morning is a church with all the lights shut off, okay? It ain't no horror house, okay? It's a church, okay? If you grew up in the church, you know what I'm talking about, all right? Sometimes we got to shut this thing down here at Impact, and it's like, oh, snap, man. Like, I'm freaking out, dude. Like, we were just over there. Now we got to get over here, but this auditorium is pitch black, and I don't know what demons are still lurking at the altar. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm freaking out, so I had this. I had this theme song, right? And, and every single time I was scared in the dark, I would sing this song. Jesus loves me, this I know. And the Bible tells me. Which now that I think about it, that made it a whole lot more creepy, right? <laughs> like, that sounds like straight out of a horror movie. Yes, Jesus loves me. Then you hear the little tricycle behind you. Ee, ooh, ee, ooh, ee. Yes, Je right? I don't know why I thought that it helped me, but for some reason I thought that it helped me. And, and, and I was scared of the dark. I don't think that we as a world like living in the dark. Why? Because darkness produces something. What does darkness produce? Darkness produces lack. Lack. A lack of what? Write these things down. You know what darkness produces a lack of? Darkness produces a lack of vision. A vision. Vision to the point where you can't see beyond. Darkness produces a lack of safety. Safety to the point that you don't know what stands against you. Darkness, you know what it produces? It produces a lack of confidence where you don't know what is next. You know what darkness produces? Darkness produces a lack of order where you don't know what aligns. Now, don't this sound familiar to you? <laughs> don't this kind of sound like the world that we are living in right now? <laughs> Where we are living in a world that, boy, is this world dark. Boy, are we living in a world where our world right now lacks great vision. Our world right now, it lacks great safety and security. Our world right now, it lacks great confidence. And our world right now, it lacks great order. You know, my heart breaks. I don't know if you've seen what's happening in national news this week, but there was a high school shooting that took place at a high school where a few lost their lives, but several were injured and many, many, many were affected. I don't know if you saw the repercussions of the darkness that lives in our world today, but man, I've been praying for those families and I've been praying for those kids and I've been praying for that faculty and that staff and that community because what they were recipients of, they were recipients of the effects of darkness. They were the recipients of a lack of vision. They were the recipients of a lack of safety. They were the recipients of a lack of of order, darkness, darkness. It, it takes just a few seconds of being on social media to know that we live in a dark world. My question today, though, is why is the world so dark? Is it dark because somebody just turned the lights off and they're like, hey, we're just going to live in the dark. Let me take you back today to John chapter 1, verse 10. It says he was in the world. Who was in the world? The light was in the world. So what it tells me is that it, it wasn't for the sake of not having light. Because the light himself, who was the light? It is the light of Christ. He was in the world. And though the world was made by the same creator that birthed Christ Jesus was in the world, watch this, the world did not recognize him. The world, what didn't they recognize? They didn't recognize the light. So, so, so why is the world dark? Is it because they, they still, it's because they still haven't recognized the light. This is why we live. In, in, in a dark world. And if the world is going to recognize 
the light, it will be not because of him who came as the light, but it will be because of you and me. I understand some of you are like, like, like oh, this is heretical. That's not, that's not true. No, no, I didn't say it. Jesus said it. Let me take you to Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. He says, who is going to be the light? You are. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. That what? They may see. Let your light shine before others that they may have vision. Let your light shine before others that they may have confidence and order and safety. Let your light shine so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let me ask you a question today. How's your light? How is the light of your life? Your light, not my light. Look at your neighbor and say, how's your light? Come on, ask him, how's your light doing? Some of you, it's time to change a bulb, okay? Because we got a whole lot of different lights up in this building today. Some people, we got, we got a whole bunch of flickering lights. You got that little flicker, like in that creepy horror movie. There's that little red light, like, right? And, and, and it's flickering. It's turning on, it's turning off. Boy, is that light on when you're in church. But the second you get back to campus, whoop, I'm, talking, I'm talking a flickering light. Like, 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 is your light today flickering? Man, my, my light is on at the Bible study. But man, my light is off in the bedroom. <laughs> flickering light. My light is on when it's convenient. But man, I'm turning that thing. I'm, I'm flickering that thing off when, when it's inconvenient. We got, we got a whole lot of flickering. How is your light? Your light. How is your light? Not my light. Your light. Not your neighbor's light. Your. How is your light? Is it flickering today? How about this one? You got a dimmer switch on that light. You ever seen that dimmable light? Before, you know what I'm saying? Like you in that house, you got that little dimmer switch. You're like, ooh, wee, 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 right? Boy, man, when you in worship, that thing is brighter than a mug. But man, when you are in war, whoo, I got to turn this thing down so I can cuss somebody out right now. Okay. Like, man, you got that, you got that dimmer switch on your light, that, that dimmable switch that's like, man, I, my, my light is at full blast when when I got joy, but man, when my, I, I got I to gotta bring this thing down because I kind of doubt God in a few of these different areas of my life. Or, or some of you, maybe it ain't a flickering light, maybe it ain't a dimmable light, but maybe you just got that mood light. You know? He's walking around, he's like, man, I just, it's a mood up in here. He's always, everywhere you go, he's just trying to set the mood, man. Set the mood. What's the problem with the mood light? See, what, what, what what does a mood light do? Mood light makes you bright enough to not be considered dark, but dark enough to not be recognized as light. See, some of you, you're bright enough to identify as Christian, but you're dark enough for nobody to even recognize it. Got that mood light, baby. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, we just vibing. We just vibing, you know. That flickering light, that dimmable light, that mood light. But in a dark world, you know what God needs? It ain't a flicker. It ain't a dimmer. <laughs> and it definitely ain't a mood. <laughs> You know what God needs in a dark world is a bright light, a light that says, I'm going to let my light shine for all to see that they may glorify Christ through my light. Is there anybody in the room today that you got a bright light today? I'm just trying to crank up, crank up the light in the room today. God needs a bright light.
light. God needs a bright church. God needs some bright young people to realize that if we are going to make a change in the world, it's not going to be because God did it. It's going to be because God used me to do it. It's going to be because God is sending me to be a light. To be a light. Did you know that your light was not made for the light? Did you know that? Did you know that? Your light was not made for the light. Nobody buys a lamp for a room that is already lit up. Nobody installs some lights in a room that already has perfect vision. But your light was made for the night. That's what your light was made for. Did you know that? Your light was made to go into the night. I am sick and tired of people saying, man, we live in a dark world. We live in a dark world, man. Oh, it's dark out here, man. It's dark up in these streets. It's dark. The only reason that we live in a dark world is because your light hasn't penetrated it yet. We, we, got, we, gotta, we gotta come to our senses. We gotta come to our light. I, I came to set the record straight today. Is your lamp still burning? Is your lamp still burning? Do you have enough fuel in your lamp not to make it to tomorrow, but to make it to the day that Jesus comes back and looks at your lamp and says, were you a light or were you hidden? Or let me say it this way. How bright is your light? How bright is your light today? Listen, today's message is not about you. I'm sorry, if you wanted a message that was about you, come back next week. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to send you. I'm going to support you. Listen, today is not about you. You know who today is about? Today is about all the people who are still living in the dark because of you. I didn't come to encourage nobody today. I came to charge some lights in the building to realize that if our world is going to get light, it's not going to be because I did it. It's not going to be because they did it. It's going to be because you let your light shine. Tap your neighbor say, it's time to let your light shine. Let your light shine today. You got to let your light shine because people are counting on you. People are counting on your light. Why? Because what does light do? Unlike darkness, what does light produce? Light produces abundance. Abundance. Darkness produces lack, but light produces abundance. Abundance of what? Abundance of vision, where you can actually see beyond. Abundance of safety, where you know what giants stand against you. Abundance of confidence that, man, I know where I'm going next. An abundance of order where all of a sudden things start to come back into alignment. How bright is your light today? Let me give you some scripture today that calls you to be a light. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. First Thessalonians chapter 5 says, You are all children of the light and children of the day. We don't belong to the night or to the darkness. Psalm 107, 13 says, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their darkness, and he brought them out of darkness, the outer darkness, and broke away their chains. This is good news today, because is there anybody that can testify today that you used to live in darkness? But then God pulled you out of darkness, and he tossed you into his marvelous I need somebody to take a 10-second praise break that knows today, I used to be a child of darkness, but now I'm a child of the light. Come on, baby, for a few more seconds, let your light shine. Woo! 
I'm preaching now, baby. I'm just here to serve notice to the world of darkness that light is coming. <laughs> and I know. Sit down. And I know. If you're in the room tonight and you don't have that testimony yet, maybe you feel like you haven't made it to the other side of your dark tunnel. I've got some saints in the room that want to let you know there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. So just keep marching, baby. Just keep stepping. I know it's dark right now, but something that I know about Jesus Christ is that there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. How do I know? Because the Bible says that Jesus was crucified. Jesus, the Son of God, he was crucified on a cross. And as he hung on that cross, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that the sun ceased. That the clouds made the world dark. That the sun stopped shining and darkness had won. But all it took was three days later. All it took was three days later. Because what the world thought is, man, the sun stopped working. S-U-N. But there was another sun. S-O-N. And baby, when you thought he stopped working just because it got dark, no, baby, you know what he was doing? He was lighting up all hell, and all hell was about to break loose for the devil, and the sun came back. And you know what he did? He brought light with him. Let me take you back to Matthew 28. There was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. Listen, they rolled a, st a stone over the entry of the cave to say, hey, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But the Son of God said, are you kidding me? There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Verse 3, his appearance was like lightning. He didn't come in the image of darkness. He came in the image of light. And his clothes were white as snow. Did you know that even still today, we are waiting for heaven to tear open and for the bright and morning star to shine through. <laughs> and where we used to get our light from the S-U-N for all eternity. Somebody say for all eternity. For all eternity. We're no longer going to be looking to sun for power. We're not going to be looking to the sun for light, but we are going to be worshiping the son of man, and his name is Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. Oh, I am preaching way better than you're preaching back tonight. I'm telling you. There's light, there's light, there's light. This is the most unorthodox message you are ever going to hear me preach because I'm not preaching to encourage you. I'm preaching to charge you. I'm preaching to charge you. I I'm, I'm preaching to, to charge you to do what? To run into the night. Listen, listen, listen. You don't belong to the night, but you were made for the night. Okay, listen, listen, listen. You, you weren't made, you weren't, you, you, you don't belong to the world, but you were made for the world. What? So that you can walk into the world and say, I'm going to let my light shine from the highways and the byways, from the classrooms to the hallways, to the transportation, Uber, to the grocery store, to the star, to every single place I go. How bright is your light today? Let me make it practical for you. When was the last time that your faith was not about you at all? Huh? When was the last time that you had a conversation with someone and actually led them to Jesus? No, no, no. I didn't say talk to them about Jesus. I said, how? when was the last time that you led somebody to Jesus? But that's your, no, it ain't. That ain't my job. That's our job. That we may go into the far reaches of this earth and shine the light of Jesus Christ everywhere we go. How bright is your light today? 
When was the last time that you had boldness to step out of your little box about me, myself, and I and actually invite somebody to church with you? When was the last time that you had the boldness in the light of Christ shining so brightly that even when they said no, you went back a second time and a third time and a fourth time? And he's like, you keep on saying no, and that just means I'm one step closer to you saying yes. How bright is your light today? And when was the last time that you saw a stranger in line in front of you and you stepped out in faith and you started praying for them? Listen, don't get it twisted. The world is not getting dominated by darkness. No, no, hear me. Darkness is not the dominance of light. It is the absence of light. We don't live in a dark world because darkness is running rampant. We live in a dark world because light is not running rampant. That's why we live in a dark world. Because my Bible says that the darkness tried to overcome the light. But it could not overcome the light. Man, you know, I, I, had, a, I had a conversation with some people, um, and they were talking about those side street evangelists. You know what I'm talking about? Like those people who hold signs, and they say, turn or burn. You're going to hell. It's a highway to hell. They hold their little picket sign and they stand on their soapbox. They look at everybody as they go by and they say, you're going to hell. You need to repent or you're going to hell. We were talking about these people. And as this conversation unfolded, they're like, man, those people are offensive. Those people are taking the wrong approach to sharing the gospel. I can't believe that they would do that. Don't you know the damage that that's going to cause to somebody on the street? And they're just, they're just, judging them. They said, Petey, what do you think? And I was like, I don't know if you want to know what I think. I said, because it's, it's usually the people who are judging and criticizing those people who have never shared the gospel of Jesus Christ a day in their life with a single person on the street. So how about instead of judging those people, you actually step out of your little box, you actually step out of me, myself, and I, and say, man, you know what? I'm going to fix the problem. I'm going to share the gospel. I'm going to share the good news. I'm going to tell people about Jesus. Why? Because it's not good news if you're the only one that knows about it. And we got to get to the place where we realize that this thing, this, this person, this man that died and rose again for me, this is good news. So I'm not going to shut my mouth. I'm not going to be quiet. But for as long as I live, I'm going to let my light shine. i let my light shine. Start doing anything. Quite literally, start doing anything instead of judging and doing nothing. Let me teach you something about light real fast. I want to teach you three quick things. How bright is your light? God wants you to have a bright light. A bright light. Let me teach you three things that a bright light will do. Number one, a bright light will expose. A bright light will expose. Anybody ever been pulled over before? Raise your hand. Raise it high. Come on. Everybody look at all these criminals, certified criminals, okay? Saved, saved, but certified. Certified criminals, okay? I don't know what reasons you've ever been pulled over. What does the officer do when you get pulled over? He, he, come, he comes at you, and you know what he does? He brings something with him. This is, this is what he brings with him. This is what he brings with him. You ever seen one of these? They're always walking like this, real slow, right? It's like, bro, I got, I got to get to my job, dog. Like, could you walk and move a little bit fast? Sometimes I think that they're just, like, playing video games in their car. You know what I'm saying? Like, why does, it, why does this traffic stop have to be 25 hours, you know? Walks up to your car. And then what does he do? What does he do? Bang! Right? Like, what is the purpose, dog? Like, I don't understand this, right? He's like, Bang! I'm like, I'm like sitting here, I'm like, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. 
No, I stopped you. Um, no, I don't. I don't. I mean, I, I was going like 85 and a 25, but I don't know why. I don't, right? <laughs> you, you never plead guilty. You know, that's what, that's what I learned. That's what I learned on Hawaii Five O. You never plead guilty. So, I don't know. You blinded me, right? Not just that, but then his partner's on the other side. He was searching the car for all that paraphernalia, you know? All that, those drugs, all those, all that, all that arsenal, you know? The little Glock that you got hidden down, right? And, and, and what, is he, what, is he, what is he using the flashlight for? Not, not just to blind you, but he's using the flashlight to expose what may be hidden in the vehicle. The purpose of a flashlight is to reveal what is hidden. It's to reveal. We, we were at a youth camp. And, and we were playing manhunt in, like, pitch black. It, it was, like, 11 o'clock at night, pitch black in the forest. I put on, I put on a, a Bigfoot costume. It's a true story. True story. I put on a Bigfoot costume, and I was just running around scaring kids, okay? Because that's what good youth pastors do, okay? Just scaring the kids, scaring the mess out of the kids because they, they couldn't see. Started pulling out flashlights, trying to reveal what was hidden. How many know that could be scary? Revealing what's hidden. Because if we can be honest, we don't like living exposed. Like, if I could expose somebody in the room, I reached out to one of you on Instagram. I said, hey, who's the closest friend? Make sure that they're here. I'm going to expose them, okay? So I have them up here on the screen. I'm about to expose their life, okay? They're sitting in this section right here, okay, three rows back, sitting in the seventh. No, I'm just kidding. Totally just kidding. Some of you, your heart sank. You're like, uh, because we don't like living an exposed life because we think that exposing is shameful. But God doesn't just want to expose the bad. He also wants to expose the good. Did you know that there are gifts inside of you that you have not discovered yet if you haven't allowed the light of Christ to expose it out of you yet? Did you know that? Did you, that there are things inside of you that only until you let the light of Christ inside of you, they will stay hidden. They will stay not exposed. Exposed. Luke 12, 2 says this, the time is coming when everything that is covered up will be exposed. And all that is secret will be made known to all. Whatever you have said in the dark, it will be heard in the light. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees in this passage. But what will be said of your life when what was in the dark makes its way to the light? Can I help you discover what's inside of you? You want to you know how to get the light of Christ inside of you? to expose every good thing that God placed inside of you, it's this word right here, serve. Serve. Somebody say serve. Serve. I'm talking like if you want to know what's inside of you that you've never discovered yet, serve the house of God. I'm telling you, serve the house. Get on the dream team. Go through Go Track. Start serving God. Watch, watch, watch. Why? Because when you build God's house, he builds your life. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it as a testimony. Listen, this is your sign to start serving. Because as you start allowing your light to shine, God is not just going to reveal through you. God is going to reveal in you what you thought was hidden. All of a sudden, you're going to start to reveal a new purpose for your life. You're going to start to reveal a new call for your life. You're going to start to reveal new gifts for your life. You want to know how I found out what God wanted me to do for the rest of my life? I started to serve. That's it. I just started to serve. My daddy, he was a pastor. I didn't want to be a preacher. I didn't want to work in the church. I lived at the church. This was like, the church was like, man, I'm, I'm done with the church. Like once I graduate, a peace out church, like I'm, I'm done with you. But I just started serving. You know what I did? One day, I'm like a little teeny bopper little mijo, okay, and 
somebody comes up to me and is like, mijo, it's time for you to serve, okay? And I'm like, what is it? What is, I can't even spell serve, you know? Like what? He's like, I need you to hold this door open, and I need you to pass out the, the pamphlets for people to take notes. So you know what I started doing? I was like, all right, bet. If I'm going to serve, I'm going to be the best doorman that you have ever seen in your life, okay? Welcome to church. Right? People will be walking past me. I'll be chasing them out. Hey, you forgot your pamphlet. Get over here now. How are you going to take notes? No takers are world changers. Okay? Then I got promoted. I got promoted. They said, hey, you've been doing so good. We're going to promote you to go watch babies. Just go watch. Just go watch the baby. Just go watch. Go watch. Go watch the little niños. Okay? And so... I started watching the little ninos. I started singing songs to them. Yes, Jesus loves pain. Come on, sing, 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 sing. When you're scared, just sing. Yes, Jesus loves me. Right? Then I said, man, you're good at that. You're good. Man, I'm, we're going to promote you to the big kids. You're gonna, you're, you know what you're going to do? You're going to go hold puppets on both hands. And during the worship song, you're just going to, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes. Jesus. And then you know what? I got promoted. They promoted me to the prayer and intercession team. I said, what? I said, what? I, I ain't just gonna pray. I'm going to be a prayer warrior. Okay? okay? The weapons that you fight with are carnal. Okay? But you're going to catch these hands, but they're just going to be like this. Okay? Okay, so I started, I started praying for people, and these old grandmas and these elderly would come up to me, and I'd say, lift up your hands right now. As a 12-year-old boy, okay, I just got radical. I was like, if I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this. As a 12-year-old boy, I said, man, shut the fuck up. Right? I'm like, I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just repeating what my daddy's saying. I'm like, shut up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing, right? And then they're like, hey, we're going to promote you. You're going to go to the old folk home. And you're going to play bingo with them. I'm like, all right, bet. I can do that. I can do that, man. And I'll be playing bingo. I'm like, B7. Hey, Frank, you got, hey, Frank, move it over here, Frank. Come on. Come on. Up. And, and I, I, got, I got promoted. And then, and then I got promoted. Why? Why? I, I just, I was just serving. I, I thought that I was just serving. You know what God was doing? As I was serving, God was revealing. As I was serving, God was exposing. As I was serving, God was cultivating. As I was serving, God was changing. Look at your neighbor say, it's time to serve. It's time to serve. It is time to serve. What does light do? Light, light, it exposes. It exposes. You know what else light does? Light enhances. It enhances. Come on, where are my influencers at? Come on, influencers, make some noise in the building. Come on. If you're an influencer, come on, be proud about it. Let's go. Come on, you got a little Melly followers? Come on, baby. Come on, you bought all of them, but it's okay. Okay. Uh, come on, where are my influencers at? Come on, y'all, TikTok, y'all, you know, you know, you know, influencers, influence, inf you, you might know what this is. Where my, where my, where my influencers at? This, this, you know what this is like? You, right here? Look at this. Bang. 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 You know, you know. It's right here. You ever, you ever use one of these, you influencers? Huh? You ever use it? You podcasters? Come on. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. You photographers? Let's go. Hey, everybody. So get ready with me today as I go to Rally, okay? Rally is this beautiful thing right here. And, and uh, I'm telling you, yes, Oscar, Oscar, you need to meet me there. Come on, Oscar. Yeah, okay. Uh, right? Right? You ever, you, ever seen, you ever seen these ring lights, right? Right, right. You, you ever seen you ever seen those two way mirrors before, ladies? You know what I'm talking about? Those two way mirrors, right? One of them is like a normal mirror, but the other one it blows your face up. Yeah, and it's got this ring light on it, and you see every single imperfection that you have. Right? You know, influencers they use this why? Because it enhances what already is. It enhances what already is. So I use this ring light because it makes me look better. Right? It makes my jawline look sharper. You know? It, it makes my eyes look more beautiful. You know? Th this, this ring light, what does it do? It, it enhances what already is. 
You know, I love what it says in Genesis. Chapter 1, verse 1. The very first verse in the entire Bible. It, it says this in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Time out. This is beautiful. The Spirit of God was hovering over the darkness. Let me encourage somebody and take a time out from what we're going to continue. God is hovering over over your darkness. Okay, I understand that the lights might be off in whatever room or space or environment or atmosphere you have found yours. I understand it might be dark, but baby, there's a Holy Spirit that has not stopped hovering over your life. The Spirit was hovering over the darkness. It was hovering over the darkness. What does God do? He speaks light over what already was. The earth was already formed. He said, I'm going to create a heaven and an earth. The earth was just dark. And he speaks light over the earth. And what was already there just got better. It just got better. <laughs> you want to know what the light of Christ, when it shines bright in your life, all of a sudden things just start to get better. Okay? All of a sudden, you got a new light in your job, and you love your job, but you didn't know that your job could actually get better. Your relationships with people, all of a sudden, the light of Christ begins to shine in your relationships, and all of a sudden, your good relationship only got better. See, this is why it's important to keep God, the light of the world, at the center of everything that we do. Because as long as God is at the center, everything gets better. All I got to do is keep him at the center, and I can expect better. Better. God wants to give you better. He wants to give you more beautiful. He wants to enhance your life, but the only way that you can enhance your life is with a bright light. Number three. What does it do? Light exposes, light enhances, but then also light enlarges. It, it, it doesn't just make better, but it makes bigger. This is what light does. This, this is just what light does. When Whit and I lived in Miami, we spent a year living in downtown Miami in a city called Brickle, and we lived in this elegant, beautiful, high-rise apartment in the middle of the city. Now, this apartment was tiny, like tiny, tiny, like teeny bopper tiny, little tykes tiny. It was tiny, okay? It was like 600 square feet, and at the time, it was me, my wife, our newborn baby, and two dogs. It was a one-bedroom apartment, 600 square feet, and we leased the apartment a month before COVID happened, okay? So everybody's locked down, and I'm over here losing my mind. And on the outward appearance, it would have looked like, man, that kind of seems like an irresponsible decision. But the reason that we got it was not because of the square footage. It's not because of the price. It's not because of anything other than this one thing. When we walked into the apartment for the first time, the very first thing that my eyes were drawn to were these Beautiful, elegant, luxury, floor to ceiling, wraparound windows. And from these windows, I could see a full 360 of the entire city of Miami. Now, I'm like a city boy. I love architecture. I love tall buildings. I love being in the city. And it was these, this picturesque window at nighttime, man, I could see all of the lights from this, from this window. And it's funny because as we lived in this apartment with these beautiful windows, our apartment was only 600 square feet, but 
the windows just made it look bigger. It just looked bigger. Why? Because there was so much light that was shining through these windows that just made our apartment look larger. And bigger. Because, because what, do, what do windows do? Windows let light in. I work in an office, but I hate working in an office because I need natural light. Anybody else? Anybody else, you need natural light. How many of you, you're like a vampire, you could work in a dark cave for the rest of your life and be totally okay? Okay. I need, I need large windows because windows let light in. This is why, you know what? I want my life to be a window. I would be happy if at the end of my life that you all, you all would look at me and be like, man, that, that dude, he was a window. He's one big old window. Why? Because I don't pray that you would look at me. My prayer is actually that you would look through me. And when you look through me, you would see the Jesus inside of me. I got a question today. When people look at you, what do they see inside of you? Do they see a whole lot of light? Or do they see a whole lot of darkness? Do they see some light peeking through like a flicker? Do they see a, a light that's coming up and down like a dimmer? Do they see a steady light that you can barely tell if it's light? Or do they see a bright light that's actually not you at all, but it's the God inside of you. Man, I want my life to be a window. I want rally to be a window that when people come to rally, they don't see a cool community of young adults. They see through a community of young adults, and all they see is Jesus. <laughs> oh, God, may we be a church. May we be a generation of a whole bunch of windows. Letting the light shine through. Letting the bright light shine through. What is your life today? Do people look at you. Do they look at you? Or do they look through you? Is the light penetrating from your life? Or are your windows boarded up? Because what windows do is they enlarge territory. They enlarge territory. It's when I let my light shine that my perspective, it gets bigger. Bigger than what? How about this? Bigger than myself. Did you know that your faith is bigger than yourself? Did you know that your devotion to Jesus Christ is bigger than yourself? Did you know that your relationship with God, it is bigger than yourself? Matthew 5, 16 says, in the same way, let your light shine. Let it shine, not so that I shine. That's not the purpose of me shining. The purpose of the shining is so that they may see your good deeds and so that they may glorify your Father in heaven. You know what I think? I think... If we were some people in this room today that started to let their light shine, I think that rally would get bigger. I do. I think that if there were Christians in America that let their light shine, the greatest movements in the world wouldn't happen in third world countries where all they have is God, but they would happen here in the United States. And, and, and a revival would just get bigger. I think if there were some people in the room today that said, you know what, I'm actually going to let my light shine and it's going to be a bright. I think that your world would get bigger. I think that miracle signs and wonders would get bigger. I think that the Spirit of God moving in our city would be bigger if there were some people that said, you know what, God, I'm going to let my light shine. You know what rally is? Rally 
It's a lighthouse. That's what rally is. That is the heartbeat of rally, who we are. We are a lighthouse. A lighthouse for every broken, messed up, living in the dark ship that's getting tossed by the winds and the waves of this world, lost in darkness. But all of a sudden, there's a rally lighthouse. There's a light that peeks through the darkness and says, hey, son, daughter, come home. Not to a cool ministry, but to a man, his name is Jesus Christ. I mean, is there anybody in the room today that can testify that it was only until you found the lighthouse of rally, it was only until you found the community of rally, it was only until you got plugged in to the light source that all of a sudden your life changed, it transformed, it was never the same again. If that's you, can you do some for me? If that's you, and rally was your lighthouse, can you stand to your feet? Come on. Come on, if that's you, come on, if that's you, that's amazing. Come on, come on, we can clap. Come on, we can clap, we can clap, we can clap. That's amazing. That's amazing, that's amazing, okay? Now now stay standing. If, if, if you found a church, a church, maybe it wasn't Rally, but maybe it was another church, maybe it was an encounter with God, and that was your lighthouse, that man, you were being tossed and turned by the winds and the waves of your dark, wicked ways, but all of a sudden there was a light that pierced through. I want you to join them and stand. Join them and stand. Join them and stand. Come on, we can clap. We can clap for every single person that you were lost at sea, baby, but you found a lighthouse, and the light was the church of Jesus Christ. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Listen, I'm speaking to you. If you're not standing, I'm not speaking to you. But if you are standing, I'm speaking to you directly today. I am so glad that you found the lighthouse. I am so glad that you found the church of Jesus Christ. I am so glad that you found the, 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 the plan A to save the world, to save your soul, was the church of, and you found it. You found the lighthouse. Here's what I want to tell you. I'm glad that you found the lighthouse. But the church... Is no longer your lighthouse. I know sometimes we can come to church and we're like, man, this is my church, man, this is my this is where I get fed, this is where I get discipled, this is where I man, this is where I develop my own spirituality and my own spiritual. No, 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 no. If you found the lighthouse, then the lighthouse is no longer for you. As a matter of fact, I'm telling you, get out of the lighthouse. Get out of the lighthouse. And realize that if you found the lighthouse, then that also means that you became a lighthouse. That means that you are huh, the light of the world. You are the lighthouse. <laughs> so stop coming to the lighthouse. And be a lighthouse. Be a lighthouse in your job. Be a lighthouse in your school. Be a lighthouse in your relationships. Be a lighthouse in your friendships. Be a bright light. I'm talking like when you walk into the sea, I want people to look at you and be like, ah, ah. Like these spotlights. Sometimes I look at these spots, I'm like, ah, ah. Did you know that that is the type of light that God is talking about? He ain't talking about some like twinkle, twinkle little star. No, no. He's talking about the bright and morning star. The one that pierces through every ounce of darkness. The one that darkness tries to overcome, but it cannot overcome it. Everybody sit down. Your light was meant for the night. <laughs> Don't miss this. Your light was not meant for the light. I'm grateful for the large gathering. I'm grateful for the large gathering. But your light was not meant for the light. Your light was meant to go into the night and become a night light for others who are broken, for others who are sitting in the same seat that you used to sit in, waiting for an encounter. Listen, I cannot change the world, but I think that we can. Why? Because we are better together. Anybody want to know why we have professional wrestlers coming next week? Anybody want to know why we got food trucks and after party? Anybody? On your seat, there's some invites. On your seat right now. I want you to pull out those invites. 
Pull out those invites right now. Somebody give me one of those. Somebody give me one. Pull out these invites right here. Rally reunion. Fight night. September 12th. Impact Church. Cute little pictures of cute little people on the back. With QR code. You can sign up. These, tonight, these cards that we're handing, we have like thousands of these that we've dropped on seats. You know what this is? This is a light. That's all it is. You want to know why we make these cards? To make it as easy as possible for you to start shining your light. But this is not the ceiling. This is the floor. <laughs> this is like entry level. Our prayer is that not that you would just invite people to church, but that you would be the church on the street. That you would be the church in your classroom. That you would be the church in your sphere of influence. But this is just the start. This is just the floor. Because some of y'all ain't never done that before and it freaks you out. But guess what? You can drop an invite. You can shine some light. <laughs> See, this is why we do this. Because I believe that next week, it's not going to be a gathering of a thousand people. Next week is going to be a light show. <laughs> Where people, all of a sudden, all the darkness is exposed. Where people, all of a sudden, their life is enhanced and enriched. And all of a sudden, people are called to something bigger than themselves. Riley, I'm trying to get us to realize that, like, I am a pastor. But did you know that so are you? I am a missionary, but did you know that so are you? I am an evangelist, but don't you know that so are you? And listen, my light is not better than your light. And your light is not better than my light. But when your light connects with my light, and your 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 all of a sudden we ain't going to be complaining about it being too dark. The world's going to be complaining, man, it's too bright. <laughs> Jesus must be coming back. <laughs> Jesus must be doing something. Jesus must be on the move. Revival must be stirring in the valley. Oh, God must be doing something through a whole bunch of young people and a ministry called Rally. Come on, is there anybody that can join me in letting your light shine just through some praise? Come on, let your light shine. Oh, let our light shine, God. May we be people, God, that have bright lights, God. And may our light shine before all men and women to see that they may see our good deeds and they may glorify you because of it. Jesus, right now, I pray, God, for every single light in this building, Lord. God, I pray for every single person in this place today. God, I pray right now, God, that there would be a reigniting of lights in this place. Some of you... Your faith has failed you. Some of you, your flame has burnt out. Some of you, you feel like, man, you are walking in the dark. If that's you, would you lift your hand to heaven right now so I can pray for you? One, two, three, if that's you. Come on. Come on, you feel like you're walking in the dark. You're walking in a dark situation. Come on, you're walking in a dark environment right now. You're walking through something dark in your life. Baby, guess what? I understand that it's dark, but the Spirit is still hovering. The Spirit is still hovering. All you need is a word from God that says, let there be light. God, we declare right now in this room, let there be light. Let there be light. God, let there, let there be a crack of light, God, that, that, that penetrates every dark area of their life. God, would you remind them that there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. His name is Jesus Christ. Maybe you're here today. I want to pray for three people. Second person, maybe you're here today and you don't know the light of Jesus. You don't have a relationship with him. The Bible says that there was a man named Jesus. He came down to, from heaven to earth, lived a sinless, perfect life, died on a cross also that you could have an eternity with him again. Crucified your sins. Carried the burden that belonged to you. Did it all with you in mind for this moment right here to get introduced to the greatest light that you will ever experience. His name is Jesus Christ. If that's you today, I want you to raise your hand on the count of three. One, two, three. If that's you, you say, man, I want to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. I want to live for him for the rest of my life. God, let my light shine. God, I pray. Would you agree with me in prayer if you raise your hand right now? Thank you, ladies. Thank you. 
Jesus, God, forgive us of our sins. Today we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, that you died and rose again. We declare that we're saved, that you are the Lord and the Savior of our hearts. Be the light of our life. <laughs> and today, I want to transition us from me to they. Who is that person in your life that doesn't have the light of Jesus? What if tonight you didn't make tonight about you and what you were going through? What if you made it about the people who are waiting for you to shine your light so that they could experience some light? We have these invitations right here. And I'm just believing that even right now, God is going to drop a name in your heart, a person in your life. That man, God has been impressing on you. Man, shine your light. But you've been running away from it. Shine your light. But you've been timid. Shine your light. But you don't know what's on the other. Shine your light before all men and women that they may see. God is going to use your life to take the blinders off of their eyes. And you know where it's going to start? With this simple, dumb little invitation. Little invitation to watch luchador wrestlers fly off the top ropes. All while they don't even know it, they're going to encounter Jesus Christ. God, would you reveal to us right now in our hearts, God, in our minds, God, would you drop those names, that coworker, that friend, that person that I've been talking to, that family member, that person on the side of the street that I don't know their name, God, but you, you put in an inclination of the Holy Spirit to approach them, have a conversation. Be the vessel that leads them back to you. Be the window that reveals Jesus Christ through my life. May we be people that let our light shine. God, may we be bright lights in a city that's dark, in a world that is so dark, in a time and space that is so dark, God, may we be the light. You are the light of the world. You wouldn't light a lamp and put it under a bowl, but let your light shine. God, I pray that this week, God, we would be like bright lanterns. We'd be like bright lighthouses. That we would begin to expose dark places. That we would be, begin to enhance dark places that we begin to enlarge dark places. We thank you, God, for what you did in this room today. Have your way, God. God, we pray for next week, God, at Rally Reunion, God, that we would have 500 people off the street that ain't never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord. God, we pray that the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few, Lord. Would you send us into a dark world, God, to light it up, light it up. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen.